In this video we're going to talk about this, this strange looking game cartridge. I'm going to explain what it is, how I came to get hold of it, and we're going to talk a little bit about how much money I think this thing could be worth. So yes, welcome back to my office if you're a regular viewer. If you're new here, my name is Nick and I sell stuff on the internet and talk about it on YouTube, yay! So what is this cartridge I hear you say? And it's a very good question. This is a Nintendo 64 cartridge, but as you will have already noticed, it's no ordinary Nintendo 64 cartridge. For starters, it's double sized, it's twice as tall. It has the same profile and runs in a regular Nintendo 64. But what this is, some people call them um, development carts, uh, some people call them prototype carts or review carts. And what it is, is a cartridge that you can upload data onto, put a game onto it. So game developers, um, this one was property of THQ. As you can see under that sticker, it says property and then of THQ. And what the game developers would do is um, upload onto this the, the current version of a game that's in development. And they were used either in-house, so they would send this to, they'd put the version of the game that they're working on on it and then send it to the like debugger department or the game test department um, and, and use it in that way. Or these were also used when you had a, a version of a game that's ready for review you could send these out to magazines and reviewers to take a look at the game and write magazine reviews, etc. So these were also reusable. This has had a couple of different games on it. If you look on the back of this one, it's had crossed out uh, WWF WrestleMania 2000 and it's been replaced with WWF No Mercy. So these were rewritable so you could you know, use them again and again. So that's what it is. They are uncommon, if not rare, and they're highly sought after by collectors. Quite often these would have, as I said before, they might not have the complete uh, commercially released version of a game. Sometimes they have early development copies on, and that's what the collectors are after, right? The, the different versions of games. Um, so this one runs WWF No Mercy, uh, it's tested, it runs perfectly fine on a UK PAL machine. I don't know if it's a different version to the regular game, I think it is because when I was playing on it, it seemed to have all of the, the level options and character options open from the beginning. So I think it's a review copy, so all the aspects of the game are available right from the get-go. So let's take a look at the cart. So here's the cart, as you can see, it's it's extra tall, normal cartridge would come to here about halfway. Uh, it's in a UK power machine, uh, we will fire it up. Um, get that on the right screen, there we go. So, it loads up, it's made by THQ. Oh my god, endless intro screens, come on. And there you have it, WWF No Mercy. So I don't know this game, but it looks like for this version, everything is selectable from the get-go. I'd imagine on the regular retail edition of this, you would have to unlock stuff. I don't know, let me know in the comments. Um, yeah, so let's just select something. Uh, what am I doing? Selecting players. Let's select players. Okay. And there you go. Fully playable. All working. Happy days. So you may be wondering where did I get hold of it and that's really quite interesting because I was given this cartridge by a friend called Alan. Now Alan is a reseller, I've got to know Alan over the last few years, I bump into him at car boot sales and he came up to me at a car boot sale and, and thrust that in my hand and said Nick 
I'm not quite sure what this is, but I thought maybe you could do some research and sell it for me and see what you can achieve on it. Um, I knew straight away it was an N64 cartridge by the, the profile of it, etc., but didn't really have any knowledge beyond that. Um, Alan bought it as part of a job lot at auction. Um, and that's as far as we know of the history of how it came into his possession and that's how I got hold of it. But the really cool thing about this cartridge, or the, the, the thing that I think is cool about this, is if you look on the back, I'll put a photograph in here so you can see it clearly, the little bit of red writing there says Les at CMVG. Now many of you will know, um, I remember reading CMVG in the, in the early 90s. That was a, a gaming magazine. And Les was Les Ellis. I'll pop a picture in here of Les so you can see his amazing hair. Um, now I've got to thank David actually for this information. David uh, McGregor um, dug around and found this stuff out. So that's Les that I just showed you. And he obviously had this car in his possession. THQ sent it to him to review the game. WWF No Mercy. And in issue, I think it's 226 of CMVG, they did a WWF special. And as you can see from the screen grab of that review, there's the screenshots that would have pretty much with absolute certainty been taken from this cartridge. So that's really cool, right? It adds that little bit of extra provenance to this, um, I think. But the big question really is, as a reseller, how much is this thing worth? And that's a tricky question. I remember when it first came into my possession, I did some research then, and there were a couple of completed um, development carts on eBay at that point. And they'd sold for around the sort of two, three, four hundred mark from what I remember. I've done research now, and in the last three months, one has sold on eBay. In fact, it was a pair, and I will put that listing up on screen now so you can see. So as you can see, that pair sold for over £2,000. Now, do I think that means this is worth £1,000? I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. But interestingly, that listing that I just showed you was for two untested cartridges with unknown games on. So does that mean this is more desirable because it's tested and working? I know what's on it. It's a decent title from a decent company. And it has that extra bit of kind of provenance that you know it was it was sent to CMVG it was reviewed I'm um, you know it's got that kind of history behind it as well I don't know but here's the thing I spoke to Alan about this and we both decided we would list this starting at 99 pence on an auction it's actually running already I will link the auction below you can go and take a look within an hour or so of it being live it had I think 12 bids it's now the following day I, I, I made it go live last night it's now the following day and as of when I'm making this video it's at 130 pounds within the first day of it being live it's listed on a 10-day auction it's going to end when we do our live stream on a Sunday. So we're going to watch it finish when we're live. Your guess is as good as mine on this. I mean, I don't know. Alan and I have had a kind of little side bet as to how much it goes for. We've probably jinxed it now, but who knows. It's a bit of fun, right? And is it worth a thousand pounds? I seriously doubt it. A few hundred? I think quite easily. Only time will tell. It has nine days left to run. We will live stream when it ends and we can all see what it fetches at that point. 
but it's exciting, right? It's something a little bit different. I've never had one of these in my possession. And yeah, hope it does well. Although I've not had one of these um, Nintendo development carts before, many of you may be aware I have had some incredible success selling a rare cartridge before. Um, this is going back a few years now. I had an Atari cartridge which I bought as part of a bundle. It owed me about a pound and that went on auction and it sold for over £5,000. Now I don't think this is going to come anywhere near that um, but I will link the video because we filmed, well we live streamed that ending actually and the guy who bought the cartridge was in the side chat and it was it was just quite a moment, it was amazing. Um, so check that video out if you haven't seen it before. Take care and I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now.